I don't know about you, but I love seasonal reading. I love reading Christmas books in December and, you know, summer books um, in the summertime and history books during the 4th of July and, of course, spring reads during the season of spring. I just love seeing what's happening around me mirrored in what I'm reading. So I am bringing you today a list of my favorite books to read in the spring. Um, some of these are old favorites and some of them are new favorites, but all of them are books that I recommend. The first book is one of my favorites. I've read it at least a dozen times. I have read it every April since I was about eight years old, and that is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. This is the story of a little girl named Mary who goes to live with her uncle after her parents die in uh, a, an abandoned house in Yorkshire, England. And she finds this secret garden and it's basically, it starts in the wintertime and it, it goes through spring and she watches the garden come to life. Um, it is all about plants and flowers and um, the animals. She watches the robins building their nests and she makes some new friends. And it's very much a story about, um, you know, like the spring after winter, both literally watching the gardens come to life in the spring and also figuratively watching the people come to life in the spring after kind of... Um, the depressing winters of their past. Wow, that sounds really intelligent. Um, <laughs> but it is one of my favorite books. I have read it so many times, and I haven't actually read it yet this year. Um, I generally wait a little bit until um, plants start turning green. And here in Minnesota, everything's still pretty brown. There's a little green around, but it's not quite yet. So I usually read this when it's time to plant my own garden, and it just it's just a wonderful book. Yes, this is one is really good, and it is the most spring-like book I can imagine. The next one I have is The Penderwicks in Spring by Jean Birdsall, and I kind of have a caveat for it. This is actually the fourth book in the series, and if you wanted to, you could read it out of order, but it's really best if you read them in order. Like, it's not like there's cliffhangers, but they are connected. So I would suggest starting with the first book, which is called The Penderwicks. Um, but this book, it, like the name implies, it takes place in the spring. It talks about the flowers blooming and the trees turning green. And um, I love the Penderwick series. It's one of my favorites. I read them all year round. But this one especially. I mean, it's in the name. The Penderwick's in spring. Read it in the spring. It's good. Most of the books on this list are children's fiction. I think because the books that I love the most are the ones that I read as a child. And those are the ones that just, you know, have a place inside my heart and stay with me through the years. But I do have one adult fiction book, and that is Vinegar Girl by Ann Tyler. Um, I first read this last year, but I've already read it three times since then, um, most recently this past February. And um, the first time I read it, I didn't really register that it was a spring book, but when I read it um, a month ago, I just, the whole time she's describing, you know, she's cleaning out her garden after the winter, and um, she's watching the trees get green and it it takes place in the spring it doesn't spring doesn't have as much of an impact on the story as it does in say the secret garden but it's, it is it is still a spring book and it's a really sweet book too so i highly recommend this one and the next book i have is a little bit different and it's a little more specific and that is the bronze bow by elizabeth george spear uh this book is the perfect easter read it's about a teenager named Daniel who lives in Israel, and he is a zealot, and he is just waiting for the warrior king to come and lead his people into freedom. And if you're familiar with the biblical story, you know that that's not really um, what happens. But it is um, a wonderful book about Daniel and his sister and some friends that he makes um, who are alive at the time of Christ. And um, it does cover the crucifixion, and kind of what happens next in the lives of Daniel and his friends. And it is um, a very interesting look, a di very different look. You know, it really puts you in the mindset of what was going on at that time. So if you are interested in reading a Easter book, I highly recommend this one. And this would probably be categorized as young adult. And then I have two little books to recommend. I'm just going to talk about each one a little bit. Um, the first one is Flower Fairies of the Spring by Cecily Mary Barker. And this is, like the name implies, a book about flower fairies. I'm not kidding. Um, it has a painting that she did alongside a poem. So it's a book of poetry. And the poems are so sweet, and the pictures are so cute. And um, these are 
like the name implies, the flowers that you would find in the spring. I will mention Barker was British, so the flowers that you find in this book are more British than Minnesotan, but I still really enjoy reading this because there are some that cross over and it's, it's fun to see her illustrations and her poems, which are very enjoyable. And then the other little book I have is The Confession of St. Patrick, which I actually just read for the first time this past week. Um, and it's a very small book. It's one of only two written documents that we have from St. Patrick. And this is a great thing to read on St. Patrick's Day. It's not very long. This version is like 112 pages and half of that is the commentary. Um, it, St. Patrick had a very unique writing style that I really enjoyed. And it gave me some perspective on him more than, you know, the myths like the, the, you know, the three shamrock myth that you hear, um, that didn't really happen. It uh, gave, you know, a little more substance to the myths surrounding St. Patrick's Day. So this is a good one if you want to learn a little bit more about him, or if you just want something seasonal to read, you know, every March 17th. Okay, that's all I have. So tell me, uh, what spring books do you like to read? Do you have any books that you read every single spring like I do with The Secret Garden? Please let me know in the comments below. Bye!